Hey, hello everyone. Welcome back to the channel. This is Praveen here and today we are going to see the in-depth things about the Git. We'll start with the Git cheat sheet. We will go with the Git branching strategy and finally we will conclude with the interview questions and answer. And if you are someone who don't know me, this is Praveen here who is running two YouTube channels. And for your information, you are watching my content, but you are not subscribing. Almost 65% of you guys are feeling that the content is good, but you are not going to subscribe. And I am going to help you with this video. Watch the video for next five minutes. If you are liking this video, then you can go ahead and subscribe or else please don't subscribe or else you can check to any other place of my YouTube content and based on that also you can subscribe to the channel. But yeah, let me tell you some good contents are rolling out. So let's get started on to the Git cheat sheet. This cheat sheet is going to turn your life into a magical turning point. If I'm going to tell you set up a Git, you are going to start with the basic commands of git config hyphen hyphen global user dot name, your username, git config hyphen hyphen global user dot email, your user email ID. These two things <coughs> are the first and the primary setup part of that you have to do in your laptop. Once this has been done, you will be able to create a GitHub account. Once this GitHub account has been created with the same email ID or all the details that you have used it here in the first step, make sure that you go with the step number two. The step number two is basically start a project. You do a git in it, basically the git in it is the command where you initialize your first repository. When you do the git in it, automatically the folder of dot git folder will be created in the folder where you have hit this command. Now, if you are able to see git clone URL, git clone URL is going to help you to clone your entire code in the internet to the local laptop. Very much important. Suppose you want to make a change. You can see here, git add file. Suppose I'm going to change in this code, this particular Terraform code. I'm going to add or do some changes. Let's say I have removed this. So automatically, whenever you are doing, let's say like <coughs> uh, git status, Okay, you will be able to see that these all changes are there, which are not added or let's say like, <coughs> okay, three tire arc, I am at three tire arc, right? Yes, I am at three tire arc, ls LRTA. Okay, get status, what else we will see? Terraform state file, okay, one second. Yeah, you will be able to see here, the entire changes will be here. So I have changed the output.tf file. So you will be able to see that Terraform modules RDS output.tf file, right? So this output.tf file has been changed. So that is why it is coming as modified. And suppose you have seen that with the help of git status, you are able to see that, okay, something has been changed. So you will be able to see that once you go ahead with this git add dot is the command where you will be able to see all these red things. If I just hit one command git add dot, that's it. Your all the changes will be committed or saved in your dot git repository. Once that is done, you need to commit the changes. So basically you will use the command like git commit hyphen m right with the changes. Let's say changes done to code. Once you are done, this all the changes are ideally committed to the dot git local repository. It means that whatever the changes you have done is taken up by the local server and it is saved by the local server. Now next command if you are able to see once you have done the git commit that's it. So you will be doing the git push at the final place where you will use the command git push and this entire changes whatever you have done as a part of the developer will be sent to your internet. So very very simple right? Very very simple and straightforward commands. Now if you see if I take you to the branches, the branches is very much important in order to play with any kind of branches. What you need to do, you need to just hit any command like git branch and you will be able to see that I am at a main branch, right? So let's say like git branch, new branch. Let's say like I want to create a new branch, git branch, um, maybe say like, hey DevOps, okay. The hey DevOps branch has been created. So I will say git checkout branch. So you will be able to see git checkout, Hey DevOps, uh, C H E C K O U T. Hey DevOps. So you will be able to see that before I switch, I need to commit all the changes. So basically, it is telling like <coughs> these all the changes are there, which are already added to the Hey DevOps. But still, you have to 
do those changes are modified changes not yet saved changes right so you see here i will do the git branch and you will be able to see that i am at hey devops right so once i have done the hey devops branch i can still create a new branch by using git checkout hyphen b the new branch if i want to delete a merge branch git branch hyphen d branch name if i want to delete a branch whether merged or not you use a capital d git tag very very much important so you go to the product right you go to the shopping mall and on every product you see a tag uh, let's say like uh, mrp when it was manufactured uh, where it was manufactured what is the expiry date all those details will be there right so git tag is similar kind of that every branch code the entire code whatever you are seeing here right whatever you are seeing here will be given a tag let's say like 1.2.1 this entire code will be under one tag so like that merging very much important this concept will help you in understanding what does a merging pattern look like so if you are able to see let's say i am at branch number a okay so i will explain you in a very practical term so you can uh, easily relate and you can easily remember those things okay so let me go ahead and let me explain you some things right now so basically what happens let's say like you are at the branch number a and you do some commits right c1 and commit c2 which we have done recently if you are able to see now i am going to create a branch number b and i am going to do the commit c2 so what this git merge and and for your information this entire code from a c1 and c2 this branch b was taken from here so let's say a branch is there i have done some changes to the a branch and i have done a checkout to the b branch okay so here i have done the checkout to the b branch and i have done some commits to the b branch c2 and c3 and now at point of c3 i am done with my coding and i want to again merge all the new changes to here so what i do is basically get a merge with branch a so that is what this example also says that so you have done a git checkout to branch b you have done some commits and you are again doing the merge to the branch a which means that all the code whatever you have done here is on the safer side and once you have validated that you are again uh, merging with the main branch right so that is one so if you are able to see rebasing little bit difference is there so in rebase what happens is uh, basically unnecessary commits right are removed and uh, whatever the commits that are needed are attached so basically you can see rebasing feature branch on to main to incorporate new changes main, made to the main branch prevents unnecessary merge commit so what happens in merge this commit ids will also be the part of this and it will look like uh, c2 c2 dash c3 dash and similarly like this and all the commits which are not needed also will be coming here but in git rebase whenever you are doing the <coughs> rebase option unnecessary merge commits into the feature branch are avoided right so you can do the git rebase hyphen i main iteratively clean up the branches commits before rebasing so whenever you are looking like okay i need a limited commits then you can use the rebase okay suppose you want to revert something or undo something so you can use git move right so move existing part to new math path git remove file rm means remove git checkout commit id suppose you want to view the previous commit right view a previous commit git checkout commit id also you can do you want to revert to the previous commit id git revert previous commit id so these all are the things which you need to remember stashing very very much important and yes if you want to see the status if you want to see the logs you can use it these things stashing very very much important again <coughs> whenever you are doing the stash this stash is helping you to store the modified data so what happens right for example let me tell you whatever the changes i have done one two three four and on the branch a and immediately i was not having a time to commit this changes right and immediately my manager said on the branch b there is a production issue and you need to create some fixes for it so what you will do is you will save all the data by using git stash so what happens right git stash will save all the data in the cache format so it it has a temporary brain where it will save all the data and you can directly go to the branch b and complete your work and then you can do the unstash right or you can do the sta popping st git stash pop <coughs> so basically with this you will be able to get all the 
previous data so all the if you again want to see you will do the git uh, unstash some command is there i'm not remembering pardon me but one command will be there which where you will get all the commit ids for the branch a and you can work on that right so synchronizing very important so basically i missed to tell you here these are the basic concepts the main branch is the main branch and basically origin is also called but uh, usually we do like uh, Whenever we are trying to work on the Git branches, we try to make sure like one main branch is there, which is our de default development branch. The origin is basically default upstream repo and head, the current branch, the current branch we also called as head branch, the head arrow mark, up arrow mark, parent of head branch and head, uh, whatever the symbol you call it for, right? Great grandparent of head. So if you are able to see, if I am taking you to this place, right uh, i wanted to show you something here <coughs> yeah so if you are able to see right head origin ideally you need to remember like main or you say like head or you say like origin these all things play almost like similar role but if you want to move from head let's say i want to go to the previous three commits right so you cannot say like git revert commit id 1, commit id 2, commit id 3. No. So what you will do? git revert head first of it 3. Something like this. So here you are seeing right git rebase hyphen i head whatever the symbol you are looking for 3. So what it will do is it will take you to the last three commits on the current branch right. So same way we will do the hands on also like this only and you will be able to see the differences. Now if you are able to see let's say uh, this is my laptop and uh, this is my uh, internet server, right? And I have cloned the code into my local. I have done the git add, git commit, everything. My code is ready and I do the git push. So this will again push the code to the internet. So very simple, right? Now git pull is the command to pull the data. Git push is the command to push the data as simple as that. And you will be able to see different kinds of things. Now, once you have seen this commands, this is not the end. You need to learn and by heart this commands, take the printout of this uh, sheet, it will help you. And if you are liking this video, like the video and subscribe to the channel and share the link with your friends also. Now let's talk about the Git branching strategy. Git branching strategy is very, very much important. So I will tell you whatever I have done in the Walmart. Okay, so let's get started guys. So basically we used to have some branches. I will tell the name dev branch. Okay, testing branch. Okay, then uh, we have the feature branch and we have the release branch. And finally we have the main master or prod branch and the last one is hotfix branch so the dev branch is taken care by the developers so basically every developer in the team will have their individual branches once the development is done the development is signed off it is moved to the qe the qe takes care of all the testing on the qe branches once the qe signs off <coughs> all the data is merged to the feature branches so let's say one de three developers okay developer two developer one and developer three are working on single feature so all their code is tested and then merged to the feature branch once the merging is done the feature branch is tested by the management of the of the team or or the project so let's say like managers or tech architects or any kind of internal team again qe comes into the picture once the feature is done now finally we will have something like stage environment or uat environment so we say like release so we plan release every two weeks so every two weeks there will be a release and the versions gets automatically changed so this will get released this entire feature plus along with other feature when we say like a combination of feature one feature two feature three is done then we say like a release is happening so this is called a bigger release we do into the into the stage and all and once the release is tested we do the production deployment let's say any ha any ha anything happens in the production uh, time and we find a bug so what will happen is developer again takes the branch called hotfix branch they fixes the branch 
again QE signs off, again to the feature, again to the release and again to the main. But if you think that these all things are not needed, <clears throat> the hotfix branch is directly sent to the QE team and the QE signs off and that artifact is deployed onto the production. So ideally everything is handled by the team. So it depends like which, uh, which branching strategy you need to use. Ideally it changes from project to project. So make sure that you are keeping an eye. So let's go to the some, uh, some of the things, but anytime if you have doubt, <coughs> please feel free to drop a message in the comment section. So if you are seeing like six Git painful interview questions and answer for you, what is Git fork? What is the difference between fork branch and co clone? A detailed answer for you is given here. A fork is a remote server site copy of a repository. You can check this. This is for you guys. What's the difference between a pull request and a branch? How to revert? Okay, this is very important. Five marks questions. I have told you, right? Git reset, revert, reset head minus one, right? These all things will go to the one previous commit ID. Okay, you can use git revert, reset both. What is git cherry pick? Cherry pick as the name itself suggests. Any commit ID, if you want to pick from a particular branch, then you use the git cherry pick. So that is what is important. Explain the working strategies of workflow. Explain the advantages of forking. Why the forking is important. Git fork is very much important because whenever you are doing some development, you don't clone the entire code to your repository. Rather you fork sometimes so that the data is saved. Can you explain git flow workflow? You can check here. What are the branching strategy? Everything we have discussed. There are many, many questions, many, many things but as the video is getting lengthy i wanted to make sure i will do more things like this if you need any kind of cheat sheets comment in the comment section if you still need help feel free to contact me check out the links in the description this is singham signing off from this video milte hain bye agle video mein